So today we're going to be starting small, and I mean real small, with atomic structure. So the atom is the smallest possible unit you can have of an element that can't be further subdivided. Um, and we're going to be reviewing atomic structure today. I think for many of you it will be a review from chemistry or possibly from high school. Um, and ult but ultimately where I want to be at the end of this video is to talk about the concept of valence. So valence is a property of an atom that determines how it can participate in covalent bonds. And covalent bonds are the bonds that hold molecules together. And, and molecules and biological molecules are the topic of um, both classes this week and actually most of the classes next week and even rolling into the week after that. So we're going to start with the foundation reviewing the structure of an atom. So an atom has a nucleus. I'm going to draw right here, nucleus. And in that nucleus are protons, which are positively charged, and neutrons, which uh, do not have a charge. And then orbiting around that nucleus are the negatively charged electrons. And they are, I'm going to draw a couple of electron shells here, but I'll, I'll tell you what electron shells are a little bit farther along. So I'll draw a little, so we've got our electrons out here. So uh, a very uh, useful property to define when you talk about atoms is something called the atomic number. And the atomic number is equal to the number of protons in an atom. And the atomic number actually defines what element an atom belongs to. So that's defined by the number of protons. There's another quantity that we define called the atomic mass. And these do get confused sometimes. And that's equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Um, the atomic mass can actually vary among atoms within an element, and that's because um, within an element there's variability in how many neutrons um, an atom can have. Um, not a huge amount of variability, but always, um, but mo in most cases there's a little bit. Um, and so when you have two different atoms of the same element that have different masses, those are called isotopes. And although isotopes are an area of great research interest for me, they uh, don't enter into this class very much, so I'm not going to say anything more about that. So, uh, so elements are defined by the atomic number, and so if we made a little table here of some elements and their atomic numbers, okay, so I'm going to list um, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen, and I pick those elements very intentionally because those four elements make up 94% of all biological molecules. So a huge part of what makes you you comes down to interactions between carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. And their atomic numbers are 6, 7, 8, and 1, and that is going to be relevant in a minute when we, when we talk about valence. So so that's, the, that's what all I have to say pretty much about protons and neutrons. Uh, and now I want to turn our attention to electrons. So electrons are arranged in orbitals. So an orbital, an orbital describes the the pattern of movement that an electron takes as it is orbiting around the nucleus. Um, an orbital, each orbital can hold um, two electrons, two electrons, which I'm going to just uh, do E minus to mean an electron here. With apologies to any electrical engineers, I may be violating that because it might stand for something else. But for here, let's just use that to mean electrons. So each orbital can hold two electrons max, and the orbitals are um, orbitals are grouped into shells. And the shells are defined by how close to the nucleus they are. So in my little drawing here, 
this would be shell one, and this would be shell two. Okay. So the shells differ in terms of how many orbitals they hold. So shell one holds one orbital, which means it can hold two electrons max. Whoops, shell one, not just shell. Shell one can, has one orbital. Shell two um, has actually four orbitals. Four orbitals, so it can hold eight electrons max. Um, and like I said, the orbital that uh, and the orbital is kind of the pattern that these electrons are moving around as they move around the nucleus. And there's a number of forces that are um, that that cause the electrons to behave in these kind of distinct patterns. Um, it's the interplay between you know the fact that they're attracted to the positively charged nucleus because they're negatively charged. But they're also, they repel each other because electrons are negatively charged. So electrons have a very characteristic way of spilling, of, <laughs> of filling the space around the nucleus. And, and those, those shapes are, are described by orbitals. Okay, so let's just think about how electrons are going to fill in the orbitals, and I'll, I'll introduce the concept of valence. So um, let's see, where am I going to write valence? Valence, and I'm going to write it right here. So valence is equal to the number of unpaired electrons in the outermost, which you'll see is pretty much true by definition, the outermost shell of an atom. And the outermost shell is sometimes called the valence shell. Valence shell. Okay, so what do I mean by unpaired electrons? Well, let's, let's give you an example here. So uh, for carbon, carbon has an atomic number of six, so it has six protons, and it also has six electrons. I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, so an atom has an equal number of protons and electrons. Those always start off balanced, um, but we don't define an element based on its number of electrons, and that's because electrons, under certain circumstances, can actually jump off of one atom and go jump onto another one. Uh, that doesn't change the, the element that the atom, you know, of the original atom. It doesn't change the element of the recipient atom. So, um, so we define that based on the protons because they stay in the nucleus and they stay put. Okay, so uh, carbon has an atomic number of six. So let's fill in these electrons. And I'm going to, I'm going to draw the orbitals kind of along the points of the compass. Um, that's not what they actually look like in real life. It's just for the sake of um, keeping track of our electrons. So for carbon, it has six electrons, so the first two go into that first shell. So the shell one is closest to the nucleus, and that's kind of where the electrons would like to be, because they're attracted to the nucleus. So these two go there. And then we've got four more electrons left over, and we're going to put those into shell two, and each one gets its own orbital. So each one of these four points along the circle is representing an orbital. And, and they don't have to pair up because there's only four. And remember, there's four orbitals in shell two. So it can hold eight electrons max, and right now it only has four. So the valence of carbon, and we can add valence to our table here. The valence of carbon, the number of unpaired electrons is one, two, three, four. So carbon has a valence of four. Okay. Uh, so now what about nitrogen? Well, nitrogen has uh, one extra proton and one extra electron, so we have to add another electron to this diagram to make it nitrogen. And I'll add it up here. So that electron has to join another electron in its orbital. There isn't an empty orbital for it to be in. So we have paired electrons in this orbital, and we have one, two, three unpaired electrons. So that gives nitrogen a valence of three. Oxygen has an atomic number of eight, so it has one additional electron over nitrogen. And so I'm going to draw that right here, so it's filling another orbital. And so now oxygen has one, two unpaired electrons, so it has a valence of two. And finally, little hydrogen, which I can't draw on this anymore because it's gotten way too big, but I'll just draw it right here. Little hydrogen that has a single proton in its nucleus. And a single electron in shell one 
It has one unpaired electron, so it has a valence of one. It's weak. So um, the reason that we're stressing the concept of valence is because it is these unpaired electrons that get shared between atoms in covalent bonds. And um, understanding covalent bonding and understanding how molecules are formed is going to be the topic of Wednesday's lecture. So I will see you then.